Well, hello and welcome to you wherever and whenever uh, you're watching uh, this service. This is our service for the first Sunday after Epiphany from St Nicholas's Church in Beverly. And my name is Mike Peatman and I'm the vicar here at St Nick's. And it's good to welcome you to our online worship today. Many of you may already be aware that we took the decision to suspend all services in the church building following the recent surge in coronavirus infections and also the much more contagious new strain beginning to take hold. Whilst that doesn't seem to have reached the East Riding yet, we felt it was prudent to act early uh, and to avoid mixing people in the context of corporate worship. So unfortunately our services in person, as it were, will be suspended uh, until further notice and at least until uh, the government reviews the, re the regulations on the 15th of February. But that doesn't mean the church is closed and it doesn't mean that the life of the church is suspended. Uh, new technology enables us to share in worship like this and also to study together and meet together in other ways. And we're also ensuring that those who aren't online or also uh, stay in touch and receive things through the post and telephone calls and so forth. So on, on Wednesday we didn't have a service and Wednesday was the Feast of the Epiphany which means the wise men have arrived, although interesting the shepherds are still here if you notice, but we've got our crib scene here uh, all ready uh, and if you haven't taken your Christmas decorations down yet, don't worry. Uh, there's long traditions of keeping them up until Candlemas, the 2nd of February, so you've got plenty of time to sort them out. So as we begin our worship, some words to open. Lord, speak to us that we may hear your word. Move among us that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Amen. Now in the Feast of Epiphany, the story which begins that season, that new season of the church, which begins on the 6th of January, uh, is the story of the Magi, those mysterious wise men bringing gifts to Jesus. But other events in the life of Jesus are recollected in that season as well. Notably, his baptism, so it's rather apt that the crib scene and the font are next to each other in our church building. So the baptism of Jesus is something that we're going to reflect on today. It's a story that's recounted in uh, more than one of the Gospels, and some extra details are furnished by some of the other Gospels. But it's an interesting story to reflect upon. And as we do that, we remember that John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, and we'll come back to that later on in the sermon. But it's a reminder to all of us that repentance, turning around, turning away from what's bad and damaging, and turning to God, is an important thing for us all to do. And so we come to him now with a prayer of confession. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Heavenly Father, Jesus taught us to love one another and to love you best of all. We are sorry for the things we have said and done to hurt you, for the ways we have hurt our families and friends and not cared for the world you have given us. Forgive us our sins and let your Holy Spirit live in our hearts so we may live as the family of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And a special prayer for today. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus as your Son. 
May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And we're now going to have our first reading, which is read by Kath, from Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptised? They answered him, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptised with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first song this morning is by Brian Dirksen. It's the song To the River, which reflects on the significance of water uh, and uh, life for Christians. Our second Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 4. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, 
and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I've been thinking about how we use words to describe our lives and the things that we do. We often use words like ought and should and must. You need to be a bit of an expert at the moment to understand all the current COVID-19 coronavirus regulations. If you read in detail on the government website, it's clear that some things are you must not and other things are you should not or you, uh, we discourage you from. So in other words, some activities are illegal, some are legal but you're recommended not to do them and other things are clearly permitted if not encouraged. Now someone once told me about an exercise that was part of a counselling course that they were involved in. They were put in pairs and each of them had two minutes to describe a normal day in their own life to the other person. And after they'd done this, they reflected on the way in which they described their day. In every case, there was a, some, something like this. You know, I have to get up at 7am in order to get a shower. I need to get to work for 8.30am so that we can open up at 9. I must get to school for 3pm th in order to collect the kids. I have to get tea ready for 5.30pm. I wonder if that's something that you would do and how you would speak. Everyone uses phrases like, I should or I must, I have to. Now the clever bit of this exercise was that people were then asked to describe the same day again. But this time, instead of saying have to and must, they had to say, I choose to. I choose to get up at 7am to have a shower. I choose to go to work at 8.30 as I need to be prepared for nine o'clock. I choose to go to school to collect my children. And afterwards they talked about how they felt phrasing it that way instead of the way they'd done in the first place. And in some cases it was quite, quite a, an emotional experience and certainly re prompted some reflection on whether they had all of their priorities absolutely right. Maybe we should all try doing that. Sorry, I mean, maybe we might choose to try that exercise at home at some point. It's an interesting thing to do. Now our second reading today from Mark's Gospel was about two cousins who chose to follow their calling to be itinerant preachers. John the Baptist, as he became known, or John the Baptizer, as our translation put it, and Jesus. John preached a fiery message in the spirit of the prophets of old. He called people to repent to turn around their lives and to be baptised by him as a symbol of their change of heart. He heralds someone who's going to be much greater than him, who will do something new, and that person is clearly Jesus. However, the question that's often bothered Christians when they read the story of the baptism of Jesus is, why did Jesus bother to get baptised? Why did he need to get baptised? Why did it happen? The one person who didn't need to repent submits himself to his cousin's baptism of repentance, as it's just described. <clears throat> well, I was reflecting on this because sometimes there are things in life we choose to do that we don't have to do. There are always some things that fall into that category. Maybe it's an act of kindness, maybe it's a phone call just to keep someone in the loop, to keep them informed. Or maybe it's just giving someone a little bit more of your time than they were really demanding or needed. We wouldn't be morally failing if we didn't do these actions. We wouldn't be sinning, to use the religious word. But 
we choose to do that extra action and often it makes a difference. It can sometimes transform a situation because the other person knows that you didn't have to do it, you chose to do it and they receive that in a different way to simply knowing you were fulfilling a duty. Now I think that's what's happening here in some way with Jesus. Jesus is fully identifying himself with all of our broken humanity and fragility. He didn't need to be baptised in the absolute sense, he chose to be. It expressed that he was fully human and the words that come from heaven immediately afterwards express that he is also fully God, fully divine. You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased, records Mark in his Gospel. It is as if Jesus is immersing himself, not only in water, but also in our human situation, so that we can fully identify with him. In his letters in the New Testament, Paul often uses the phrase, in Christ, to describe what a Christian is, the status of a Christian, if you like, the belonging that we have with Jesus. And that's clearly the flip side of this. Jesus is fully with us, immersed in our situation, as he was immersed in those waters, so that we can be fully with him, or in him, as, as uh, Paul puts it. There was a man called Irenaeus, he lived in about the 2nd century, and he was one of the early theologians of the church, and he said that he became what we are, that we might become what he is. Amazing thought, isn't it? He became what we are, that we might become what he is. Jesus didn't need to do any of this that was recorded in that Gospel story. He chose to come among us, to share our life to immerse himself in our situation, not as an outside spectator who can somehow be distanced and behind a protective screen, as many of us have to be just at the moment, but as a full engaged participant, taking all the risks that humanity involves. And that is what we call grace. That is what we call grace. It is chosen. It is not under compulsion. And that is how we know God loves us. So choose well today and remember the one who chose to be with us, to be one of us, in order that we might be with him. Amen. And now Pascal is going to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we give thanks for this new day. May be we filled with joy as our hearts overflow with love for you and all we meet along our journey. May we walk in your way, live our lives for you and be mindful of your presence each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we call to mind all countries where there is war or conflict, we pray that you will look mercifully upon the sufferings of the innocent people involved. In a moment of quiet, we bring before you one country or a situation on our mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and Government and the leaders in the rest of the world. Sharpen their consciences and give them the courage to make wise decisions and trying to meet the needs of all who suffer, especially as the pandemic continues worldwide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray today for our friends our families and our Christian community, that united by our common baptism and despite being unable to meet in church in person, we may be able to welcome the newcomer, the stranger and all who are vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we bring before you today all involved in education as they cope with all the difficulties of homeschooling, providing schooling for the vulnerable and the children of key workers, praying that their efforts will be rewarded and that they will cope effectively with all the challenges and changes. And we pray too for parents and carers who are there to support their children. And we do pray for all the children who, in this really hard, challenging time, they will find this schooling very difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who face difficulties in their personal lives, all who are sick or in pain, with depression or mental health problems, the bereaved, those with problems in their relationships, in their neighbourhood or in their workplace. Give them a patient faith in their troubles and the knowledge of your love, peace and healing. In a moment of silence, we bring before you someone we may be concerned for this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember those whom we love who are no longer here with us, whose anniversary falls at this time, and for all who have died recently. We give thanks for lives well lived and for happy memories. May they find rest in the eternal joy of heaven, and let all who mourn their passing find comfort and peace in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we thank you for making us your children, for feeding us with your spiritual food, and for the promise that you listen to our prayers and answer our needs. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our next song is Holy Water by John O'Beatman. Storm 
Thank you to Johnny for letting us use that song. Just a reminder that our services will be continuing online until further notice and we'll continue to have other activities uh, going on through Zoom and other ways as well. So stay in touch with us on our Facebook page or on the website and obviously the church community, uh, you'll be getting information and links via email. And if you do want to join in, do get in touch with either me or the office to uh, get, get hold of the access codes uh, uh, so that you can be part of what's going on. We're looking to have a Bible course soon, so do stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I hope very much that you're able to stay safe. We are all trying to uh, do our best to look after one another. And whilst this restriction means that we have to meet in this way, we hope that that's a small contribution to uh, overcoming the challenge of this virus in the coming weeks. And so a final prayer of blessing before we go. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So let us go in peace.